Well, hello folks. Been a long time, but here I am. I'm going to talk to you about my trident maples here today. And unlike my usual here and there scattered uh, approach, I'm going to stay focused primarily on the tridents. Because if I tried to show you a lot of the stuff that's around here right now with all of the growth, your brain would explode from all of the sights to see and to behold. Um, not only that, that's not the best camera to use anyway. So, um, But aside from the tridents, I've got a couple of little tips I want to share and um, hopefully that'll help. Okay, so we're going to start with this right here. Okay, and of course, I believe I've shown this before. It's um, a trident maple that I actually had attached to a root over rock configuration. And when I saw the movement in it, I had to remove it again. Um, and right here is part of where that was removed. That root just uh, died off on me. Um, it was damaged in me digging it, and um, so I'll end up carving this, this out. I'll do more work up here soon enough. I've already uh, carved on this and uh, reduced the dead wood in this. I've trimmed this back this year. This apex was probably another 10, 12 feet long. I reduced it probably a month ago. And um, I'm kind of in a lull right now on um, growth, but uh, this tree is coming along really nicely. Uh, this branch up here, which could serve as an apex, I chose to keep it and to make it a pad in this area, and then I'll have this pad over here for right now. Uh, and like a lot of stuff around here, you know, I might uh, decide to do otherwise with it and um, just let it go. But for right now, because this is my design for me, I'm keeping this. But my mind's idea is either one of these can be a single apex to work the branches with. If I were to keep this branch, I would reduce it by half to three quarters of its height right now. If I were to keep this, then I would be selective about these branches that I have here. And again, the other branch would be reduced drastically, that it does not look like an apex, and it would afford other branches coming off to the side, you know, above this. But otherwise, it would be reduced. Um, again, I like this tree. Um, lots of movement. It, just grabs your eye and captivates uh, your imagination right away. So, so you can see that right off. Oh, and by the way, new hat. I retired my other one. It has a place of honor. Lots of uh, good days, but my knot needed something else. So anyway, as I let this branch continue to grow, I'm also thinking this branch could actually be removed and the trunk uh, develop more, but the pad would remain up here, and uh, so. There are always there's always room for changes and uh, modification. So the girth on this branch and this branch has increased uh, nicely over this season. And um, so again, I wired it and uh, and I'm putting more movement in these branches. So. That is, that's that little fellow. And I'm just going to move this, let you get a closer look.
pretty nice, huh? And um, there's no particular rhyme or reason, but here I have another tree. This tree, um, actually I had this in the ground and I dug it this season and the apex here I just reduced um, this past week. I started a new apex here to um, continue the movement. I wired this branch in a downward position for right now and as you see over here I have the apex upturned so that the energy can continue to uh, go through that branch and thicken this and as this continues to grow and thicken I'll put more movement in this branch here also probably next week or the week after I'll put more pressure on this if not simply just put more wire on it but I'll put more pressure on this to bring this branch down further to tighten up that arc in it now as you see I have this in the colander and as you see lots of roots growing out and this is what you see a lot of people talking about uh, growing in a colander and air layering the roots this uh, soil is chocker block full of roots right now uh, at this point a good part of the time this is sitting on a bench in a semi-shaded location okay not that direct sun beating down onto it all the time and then I take it and I sit it in a shallow bin so that the roots will thrive on the moisture the fertilizer the water I top dress it with fertilizer and also I put liquid uh, fertilizer or, or, or solution of B1 uh, 0 10 10 or the powdered uh, water soluble fertilizer it doesn't matter what brand and I have that in the water solution and um, here you go and again the girth on this trunk has increased at least uh, about a quarter of its original size already um, and we're talking about six months actually because I didn't do this until um, you know after the year it begun so so this is a good process to use you know um, and the trick there is to keep it in uh, water okay you can sit it in water for ever okay now this is a secret okay and and I've said this before in uh, my earlier videos people say oh you can't leave your plant in water you'll get root rot the reason plants root rot is because all of the oxygen is depleted all of the free oxygen is depleted from the water okay do you get root rot in hydroponics no because they're replenishing the oxygen by keeping a constant flow or uh, um, some people use the um, siphon method the water rises it falls it rises it falls well this is replenishing the oxygen as well as the other nutrients and such and keeping a flow over the roots so if you don't have a aerator you can get a little mineral pump put it in your bin and continue to pop, uh, pump um, air in it all I do is sit it in the bin and as I'm watering I shoot a jet of water into that bin and after between three and five days or so I pour the water out because I don't want to breed mosquitoes okay so you don't get root rot because the plant is sitting in water it's because the oxygen is the free oxygen is depleted from the water and it's sitting there um, in your pots if you don't have good drainage the water just sits in the pot on the roots in the soil there's no oxygen uh, transferring there's no movement that water is just sitting there the oxygen is moved out and salts build up and other things occur too it's just like you holding your breath okay toxins build up 
from you holding your breath in your body and you either stop holding your breath or you pass out. The autonomic system takes over, you begin breathing, clears out the toxin, your head clears, you come back to consciousness. So anyway, this is just another little tree that I'm working on. Um, and you can see that was a significant cut on the back of that. And um, there's another. And you can see that they're callousing over uh, pretty well. And I've already gone in and um, scratched the calluses on both of these uh, at least once this year, maybe more. I do so many of them. Um, and I need to do it again as well as reduce some of that dead wood in here. Okay, you can see down here that the callus hasn't rolled over as well. Okay, so I'll go in there uh, with my power tool knock down some of this uh, dead wood scratch the roll or the where the um, dead wood and the callus comes into contact I'll scratch that it will create a healing effect and um, we'll move on to the next okay I'll just sit that out of the way so it won't be so congested in here uh, this kind of leads into my later on uh, tip I was going to give you, but you know, oh well, it still works. This is a root over rock configuration that I've set up this year. And um, as you can see, there's a blue rock in there. Somebody thought it was a good thing to paint the rocks blue. wasn't me, but I took the rock. So anyway... You can see I've started uh, the branches and actually I pulled this aside today even before I thought about making this video to wire down the branches. I cut this apex out this week, well actually yesterday and um, so now today I'm going to wire that down. If I beat the storm We've got uh, Tropical Storm Fred coming in, and Grace seems to be not so graceful. It's supposed to be uh, shortly behind him. So anyway, perhaps you can see the roots moving down over that rock. And then you can see my contrivance where I've got the lava rock there and the root uh, laced over it. So in time, the root will uh, grow and pull that rock in. And with pressure, by wrapping it, uh, that will assure that that will be cinched in there really nicely. And um, you can see the apex is rough carved at the first cut. I just whacked it and kept on moving so I could grow a new uh, apex. And um, so I'll have to refine that also. But, okay, as you can see, I've got this red that's a cake pan a lid or basin whatever and that's just the circle from a cut down pot okay I recycle things and again I've said this before you don't need a pot to grow a plant in you just need to keep the um, roots moist and that's it doesn't matter about the ultraviolet rays the wind or whatever if you can keep it moist enough it will grow okay but it's easier if you contain the roots and cover the roots with whatever, whether it's water or whether it's soil, okay? Keeping the roots moist is the important thing. So I recycle a lot of things and I use the lids or the, the rims or the cut down circles of a pot to um, make another pot, okay? With, in this case, it's a cake uh, part of a cake pan uh, you could use a flat tile like the tile and if you have a small rim you can put that on there that's a container you don't have to buy anything you don't have to spend money and you're recycling junk that would go into the uh, landfill anyway and you're producing a bonsai you know something that 
you love, something that you will cherish, you know, but again, you minimize the uh, impact on the landfill when you do that. So, so hopefully you can see the roots there. Pretty nice. And, um, Quite frankly, I have not uh, really made a design yet on this, so, but it doesn't matter. It's still nice. Now, the other part of what I was talking about on recycling, and again, I was going to do that later. That is a prune uh, cup, pot, and that is a plastic, that's pistachio. Yep, pistachio. Okay, that's the the paper with plastic coated pot that the um, prunes or raisins come in, and that's the um, plastic pistachio bin. I wrap that with duct tape. Don't have to. I wrap that with duct tape. You don't have to. But again, as this decomposes. Um, it helps hold this together just a little bit longer and I keep cheap duct, duct tape around always okay so this has more than double in its girth and overall height well in the girth you can see the um, new growth pretty much a lot of that is, has expanded but that's the new tip which is about a foot at the apex and um, that's just the basic shape. That was a cutting that I took. And um, so I stuck it in here and it's growing like gangbusters. Perhaps you can see the roots right above my thumb. And if the visual is good enough, you could actually see roots through the container. There are some roots right there. But you see I perforated the container and the um, duct tape and I keep this in water 90% of the time yeah. I change it out when I want to get rid of any moisture or water that may harbor uh, mosquito larvae so you don't have to because again I shoot a jet of water into the um, bin or I keep it into uh, the lid of a Tupperware tub storage bin doesn't matter what size and the water can wick up the roots are filling this up and I can feel roots all through here this was a small seedling just at the beginning of the year okay and this because the seedling is more vigorous in girth or uh, growth at the beginning of the season than that cutting that cutting had old wood on it the cutting had old wood on it but this seedling has more than tripled its size. I mean, it was just a little thing, small as that, when I put this in um, probably four months ago. Again, I keep it in water and um, not in direct sun, but a good amount of sun, okay? because I don't want the nodes to spread out too far okay so that's recycling you know I use my uh, potato chip bags the plastic ones things like this and I don't put duct tape in it if I don't duct tape it for one thing well it doesn't really matter but once I put the soil in then I drill the holes in it's easier that way to drill the holes okay um, milk jugs plastic containers yogurt cups all of those can be drilled and the thing is drill lots of holes in it not just one or two holes that people have traditionally told you to do you know you need a drain hole or two like our bonsai pots our bonsai pots have 
you know, two, maybe four drain holes, three in some cases, and then wire holes. Well, I know I'm kind of going off a little bit, but that's the idea of putting all of those holes in there and keeping it good and moist. Now, I mean, if you're doing a thousand plants, it's going to be uh, very problematic to, to do this and to keep that moisture going like that, okay, unless you got uh, deep pockets and a pretty good setup. But, you know, for a handful of plants, you just get your uh, Tupperware lid and go for it or a service tray and you're good to go. Okay, so you've seen this. And I'll just put this out of the way. Let me bring this around. This I am proud of, okay? Doesn't look like much. In fact, at this point, it's not much. But you know what this is? This is a root. That is just a hunk of a root off of my trident maple, or one of my trident maples that I cut. And what I did earlier is uh, I took seedlings to graft to this. The seedling croaked on me. They didn't make it. I mean, I've grafted seedlings to uh, fresh root pieces before, and they've taken not a problem. But for this re uh, season, I did three of them, and uh, they didn't take. But, yes, I am MSB, the Mad Scientist of Bonsai. What do I do? I experiment. I try to think through what is going on. And I was saying, why did those not take? And in the meantime, the roots, I checked these to see if they were still viable. And I kept them in soak bins, watering away. And lo and behold, I got shoots coming out of this, okay? Now, you might say, well, if that was above the ground, no, this whole thing was covered up. All of this to that cut was under the ground and is a part of the roots. And this is the first time I've ever gotten a trident maple to sprout on a root piece, okay? So, as you can see, I've done some wiring. I've got some guy wire on there, and you can see the wire marks. And it's growing pretty good right now. So we'll see what this becomes. Um, I'll have to do some carving in here later on, but at this point, I'm just happy that it's alive. And you can see that base pretty good but anyway persistence don't think your plants are dead uh, I ship plants and from time to time the carrier will uh, have a delay in delivering and the next thing you know oh the plant arrived dead the plant is not dead the plant is in shock I've had uh, junipers well yeah several junipers that's been out from uh, and a crepe myrtle that were out for more than a month and they survive okay yes I got them back and I did what I had to do did what I needed to do and they survived okay the plants are not dead they're just in shock and just like any living thing the energy is pulled back into the center of that living thing trees just like people your blood uh, vessels shut down in the cold and the blood is drawn into the core and then your brain is the last place that the heart and such pumps the um, warmest blood that it can provide and then you either kick over or you're revived by um, good care at that point okay so um, so that's the idea and that's the reason why I kept that root going even though it looked uh, virtually hopeless well it, to me it was hopeless but I'm looking to learn and to understand what the possibilities are to go beyond hope okay so this 
you've seen before and you saw it as a cutting when I talked about cutting uh, large pieces on an angle and the roots coming out at the bottom of that angle this is one of those plants so right now this plant will say from uh, from the cutting is four seasons but three years because I took it like in um, August or September and then I potted it up in a little four inch container and did a video that next spring okay and then I let it grow and you know stabilize for a season and so on the third year which is the beginning of this year for this particular material and uh, here now we're in August so that's three full years but you know the seasons have changed and uh, so here we are and I label this as my front just to kind of give me a reference of what I looked at last there's no front there's no back there's no side in my world with bonsai it's just a tree and I like viewing it from one area more than another but I like them all I like the view because one area may offer a surprise you know one area may offer you that look that just takes you away and you're thinking oh if I could be in that certain place oh it feels so good and you're just in your imagination and your creativity is flowing because you see it from one direction and then another direction you might say what is that about but again it's all about surprise so I don't look at it as this is the front this is the back so I even though I've marked this as front it just gives me a reference point to say this is what I was looking at when I started uh, putting this together because the angle here that you can see is obvious okay see that angle is obvious and as I'm looking at that it's like okay what am I going to do about that okay see you're looking at it and you're you're looking right underneath it okay so um, as I study this I will put more pressure and tension on this root wrapping it with tape and wire or so forth but this eventually when I'm ready I'll start scoring it I'll scratch that and that's cambium or callus rather under there and this is the regular surface of bark okay the outer skin but I'll scratch that and it will roll over just like any cambium and eventually it will thicken up and cover that and again between me scratching it to damage that uh, calloused area and putting pressure on it by wrapping it with uh, tape and wire and putting pressure on that to pull it tighter around that rock from the root here and from here compressing it that will fill in that over time okay but but again kind of going back to what I was saying about taking this on that angle it does not matter and a lot of people you know uh, who are traditionalists in bonsai cut it flat you need your roots to flare out not every tree is the same okay not every style or design is the same not every artist is the same okay so people that are emphatic other than me about being emphatic <laughs> just understand take it with a grain of salt and understand there's leeway on every side of bonsai okay you know you give and take so it's not just one way so anyway this is what I've come up with by taking a non-traditional cutting why because I'm not afraid to use what I've got I wanted a thick piece of wood okay to do something with not necessarily to put it on a rock even 
okay but I wanted to have a live tree that I could say I took a piece that's more than an inch in diameter and got it to root that was my uh, initial uh, deal right there and I was happy and proud of that I've got other pieces that are larger than this right now that I took out this year okay yeah they're nearly almost two inches which is just like my cutting for uh, my big bonsai when I cut the top out of it that's a two incher okay the top of it is growing right next to my um, main uh, bonsai but again that was my pleasure so now look at this and this is almost style in itself I just cut this back this week too with the other tree and in this one I'm gonna have to come in and I've already looked at it but this branch this branch will be reduced drastically or taken out completely in lieu of using this branch which is thinner because it's in the uh, crown of the tree okay I need this thinner branch but they both emanate from the same area and I don't want that to thicken up so much that it becomes a big old huge super knot and then um, I'll end up reducing this not cutting it all the way off but reducing it and then I'll see because I've got this branch which is thinner not that this branch right here that uh, bifurcates on top of that this branch okay so this branch comes up over the top and then down to the side here so this branch will be reduced to uh, uh, minimize the overgrowth the um, clubbing of that wood back in here okay and then I'll um, work on assessing these branches but again I've got some wiring to do to bring down some of these branches and to move them out but again look at that we'll say three years okay three years yeah four seasons but three years and that's pretty nice that's pretty awesome now you see I've got this raised up and then I've got a tub here because I want the roots to extend down because um, well I think this rock actually goes at least to the depth of this extension here and I needed the extra soil to um, you know just retain the moisture because this plant was not going to be soaking a lot okay I knew from the beginning as I set this up that I wasn't going to be able to put this into a place where I could keep it constantly in water not only that in this configuration I don't really like to soak uh, my plants that long why because my soil my soil is usually uh, reused stuff I'll mix in some of my garden compost you know when I rake up the leaves um, my household organic uh, stuff you know the leaves peelings uh, you know things like that no meat products you know I'll use eggshells banana peelings and so forth you know and so when I get my compost I'll mix it in with old bonsai soil I'll mix it in with you know the cheap uh, topsoil or cheap uh, or uh, mulch that they sell at the store and then I'll create my own recycled reused uh, soil because at this stage all I need to do is grow good plants and so because my soil is inconsistent I don't want to uh, put this to that test of uh, keeping it constantly moist because some of it could retain more moisture than others and that moisture given the organic uh, nature of the soil could uh, set up that root rot we talked about because that moisture is just constantly sitting there and if it's sitting there in the tub and I don't come back for a week then I got an issue but even that could be remedied so and here's extra bonus for you 
you break off a branch and you got a big tub, that is a live trident maple cutting right there. That's a whole tree now because I just stuck it in there. And I usually do that uh, when I'm trimming a plant. If I got, if I have the space, I'll take a piece or two to put it in that pot. Why? Because if you need to do a graft or if you want to have a mate for that tree, you've already got a start to work with. And you know that this is from this tree usually. So, a free trident. And you can mark this down. This is a rare thing. I've actually tied this in. I don't generally tie in plants. No need to. It's expensive, it's time consuming, and then it's a pain trying to take it out when it's repot time. But this is so ungainly. This is um, something that needed to be secured to that rock. Because this actually was placed on the rock here. That other one that I showed you was grown in the ground for a season or so. And the roots grew around that. Whew, that's a lot of work. This is Running Man. That's Running Man. This tree is right now it's probably uh, I think about through blah 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 11 years old now from two seedlings that I fused together down here and um, it started drying out because I had it in a real small container and um, I wasn't watering it deep enough and I did not keep it in the moisture like I knew I should and I kind of had it displayed out front so I lost a good piece up here which it needed to come off anyway because it was kind of reverse tapered it had started regrowing and it got thicker out here than back there where uh, it divided so anyway that's running man that's a fused deal there and that's close to 11 years old I've got other trees that are you can say six seven eight ten times larger than this same um, year same batch of seedlings and um, because I'm just growing this differently treating it differently I've already cut this back this year and um, I'll end up doing it again but again this sits in moisture or I'll sit it on the top of a five gallon bucket with the lid on it and the lid holds moisture and I'm right there with the water hose and I'm uh, spraying it a lot. There we go. This is old 15 years old here from a seedling. Um, and I had it uh, before this, it was in a really small container little uh, I think it was just a little two inch pot just like uh, running man had those in the same size container and then um, the juniper I had in here uh, I put it on a rock so I had this available I put that this tree into that and um, that's nice nice shape is odd it's different I'm disappointed in my ability to get this cascade part to uh, thicken up and I've tried the inversion thing and um, there's always something either somebody comes by and straighten it back up because they think it's falling over uh, or I'm not getting enough water to it and so with that Moxnix I'll make do with what I've got uh, it's time for me to take the wire off up here I think this is three months of having um, wired this but again 15 years old nice gnarly base here Let's see that 
So, yep. And again, I don't know if you're one of the two or three people that's watched me over time uh, when I spoke about growing um, seedlings in water. I did a video a while back, several years back. This is one of those seedlings that I had at that same time when I was doing the root over rock. I had you know, a good number of those uh, and I think you know uh, they turned out for me they turned out really nice and you see I've got this well this is ungainly it tips over with the small pot so that was a wheel from a, a mower or a, or a pressure washer and I just lashed it to that and I sit this in a basin and it's sitting in water most of the time okay does that look like root rot does it look like it's suffering you can see the roots right at the base in there and I, yeah I actually um, did root work on this this year so so that's pretty good but again that's the wheel is just to stabilize it I put it into the um, soap bin and I do add uh, my little pelleted uh, fertilizers to the top the water is either fresh water or I'll add um, um, water soluble fertilizers to it and we're good to go okay Just throws all over the place. Anyway. This is a growing year for this plant, so that's why, in part, the branches are so far out. Um, I've cut it back from the original. Uh, put sealant on the, the great cuts, and uh, I've got good callusing in all areas. So there's plenty of moisture come in, plenty of uh, fertilization. I've top dressed it. As a matter of fact, when I put this together, I actually put fertilizer in the soil mix. Uh, and I've top dressed it. I've uh, done the fungicide, pesticide thing this year. And um, it's coming along pretty well. And this was a tree that I mentioned I had sold and there was an issue with the address of the buyer and it's like well I can't mess around with this all day I mean it's bad enough that I can't dance so I can't continue to mess with that so anyway next season I'll come back and I'm just gonna let this go this way I might even fertilize it again this year I'm not looking for color I'm not looking for it necessarily to drop leaves between well actually it is August now. In my area, I've experienced on Trident Maples leaf drop from June all the way into December. Okay. Now I've taken off air layers in August, September, October, November, planted those in the ground, and they continue to grow and thrive through the winter. And yes, some days we would have freezing temperatures that's below 32 degrees for more than an hour but less than a day, okay? Uh, it's rare that we've had uh, freezing temperatures, 32 or below, for more than uh, a day over these past few years. Um, I mean, there have been times and days where we've had it three or four days in a row 
where the daytime temperature would come up to, to uh, like 23 okay but and this is northwest Florida but here in this short period that I'm talking about over the last five years to till now you know so I'm not looking for any color in this because I'm growing these things and if I might okay I, I'm not picking at anybody and I'm not throwing stones if I might a lot of people get in their mind that this is a bonsai okay yes it's a bonsai it's a tree in a tray bonsai okay tree in a pot tree in a tray but it's not what we call a finished bonsai okay this is a pre bonsai and in my mind's eye okay in my world if you're dealing with me I'm telling you you got to grow a good tree before you can create a good bonsai okay so I'm growing this right now and I'm not looking to spend thirty forty dollars for a quart of uh, Akadama bonsai mix to grow this tree okay it might croak on me now I'm out of my thirty or forty dollars for that little quarter of Akadama bonsai mix and all my other time I mean I have the pots and I've got pots available to me but typically I would not put this in here when I dug this tree and was moving it I had to put it in a pot real quick like right now and I wasn't going to piddle around with it so I grabbed what was close to me okay <coughs> and I put it in this pot I would have rather not put it in this pot because I want to grow it I would have put it in a cut down uh, grower's tub and done this with it but this is what I had what I had to do at that moment because I had other things pressing so uh, situationally I act and react to you know the task that I have at hand but again this is coming along nicely you see good green uh, leaves it's under the wisteria and under the um, low pot tree there it gets sun in you know uh, enough sun that the um, inner nodes are not overly extended they could be a little bit closer but again I'm going to cut this back next spring to bring all of this in and then yes I've got secondary uh, branching on uh, a lot of these but I'm still working on the primary branches okay yet I dug this at the beginning of this year and I'm still working on the primary branches I'm not in a rush not in a hurry I want to get enough of the primary branches to the girth that I want before I really start working with it and again I cut the apex out the main apex was over here and when I whacked it initially I came back probably three four months later and and did this larger angled cut to clean that up because this was almost flat across here and a little higher but I wanted to uh, highlight and pronounce this apex so I had to get closer to that okay so it's an offset apex you got to live with what you got okay uh, quite frankly none of my trees are <laughs> designed or styled I see what's there and I work with it and work around it okay the styling and the design is great but if I was going to sell a tree for a thousand dollars two three four thousand dollars yeah I'll do that but I'm not really looking to sell this or that I'm just trying to create a bonsai with some character to it and so the heavy branch bending you know the root grafting the um, thread grafting I can do it but I'm not into it so so there you have it and right here you see that that root I'd uh, covered up but now it's exposed so I'll have to go back in um, scratch that score it damage it cover it up again and then um, hopefully roots will sprout out here to give me nice surface roots and that's what these rocks were for but it, but I'm not the only one watering these things and uh, and the birds and the squirrels come in here and move stuff around 
also looking for food or whatever they are looking for. They can't be looking for love because they'd be looking in the wrong place. Like, I don't love them squirrels. You've seen this before. I dug three trees in the spring and I did a video and I asked a question on the other two why were the leaves of different sizes and um, this was the third tree well for me this was the ugliest tree of the three but yet I, I was drawn than the others okay I wonder why look at that mug but anyway my task was I mean, aside from keeping it alive, my task was to straighten this branch out. It was pointed, uh, kind of curved around the tree. And you can see this is loose now, okay? But at one, t well, several times, I had it wedged in, locked in there, to make a fulcrum to pull that back this way toward you to uncurl this branch. And then it was pointed up more well I wanted it down and so I had this again situated on the bench so this was locked in to the bench and that was kind of wedged in there and that pulled this down and of course you can pull that down now anyway but it really straightened that out to my liking to my satisfaction and I just took this off of the bench to work on it today. Well, actually, I didn't take it off to work on it. I took it off to show you and to do this video before Fred and his companion following behind comes in. So now, from the spring, and I've cut this back and trimmed on it already, but over these past few months, all of this has shot up. And this is on a a, a bench elevated about so high and I top water it okay so this is not soaked in a bin and if I did soak it it would just to be giving it a deep watering and a fertilizer you know with a liquid fertilizer or 0 10 10 or um, B1 solution just to to give it some extra vigor but this you know, I don't put that in the soak and, and keep it in there. Again, so many plants and where it's located on the property makes a difference too. And um, so, again, I have to do a lot of cutting out to find the tree in this again. Because that's a nice little shoheen. And I'm thinking the angle is going to be like that. Semi-cascade. A double... Uh, you can say a double apex or a double trunk, maybe triple, and um, gradually triangle down that way, like that. So that will be brought out that way, not that far out, but probably where my thumb is, or just a little bit, kind of like that, because I like that angle on that trunk. So. Get a good look. You can see the crown of it, the apex in there. You can see where that that bend is, and I I was pulling against that back this way. I mean, it was really over that way. So, but that's pretty nice. Not a finished tree, but I like it. Viewing side. cut that truck back right there. The 
looked like a little owl to me. A little face of an owl kind of rolling in. But anyway, I thought about what I wanted to do with this to flatten out these branches and all of that. But I like this as a tree. Okay? And this branch is just growing and thickening up. And I want to take both of these. I want to take these and I'll bring these down a little bit and then I'll cut that back. But and either next year or the year after I'll reduce the pot size. So so that's Nice trunk, nice flare, and this is what I like. This side is actually higher than this right here, so a little bit of elevation change on the tree. Could put an accent rock right there. but. Anyway, not much to see on this one except that it's there. And again, I've got so many things around here. Right off to the side, I've got a trident maple that I uh, did an approach, several approach graphs on because half the tree died on the. Um, apex side of it as it were so I took the remainder of the tree put it on a arched rock let it grow for a year or so and then I went back in and um, grafted in some seedlings so we'll see how that works um, you know I'm working on several uh, groves of tridents but again I like that. Tools, tools. This is what I use 85 to 90 percent of the time when I'm working. So you clean it with bleach, fungicide, alcohol, a little bit of um, friction, in other words rub it with a rag, your shirt. Uh, but use something on your tools fungicide to clean this periodically okay to keep um, the fungus I don't use cut paste or anything all of the time but sometimes as you saw with the um, the other tree sometimes I do okay um, when it really in my mind's eye needs it and needs to be uh, protected now one of the times for me is when it needs to be protected is in the springtime you got the extra moisture um, everything is blooming including fungus viruses you know pests and so forth so to me this stuff gives a little extra measure of protection okay but i don't use it all the time and if by chance i get a tree that damaged and I'll clean it up and then I'll use some of that on it okay um, if you don't mind just let me see if I can pause this for a second okay now as I was saying sometimes I'll get a tree that for whatever reason is damaged I wired this tree at one point and my wiring broke the uh, skin because there's no bark on this thing yet excuse me and it got infected okay it got jacked up in other words so 
you can see where the yellow is there you can see the damage here and the um, cadmium is rolling back over with callus and such but the branch is still intact but you can see all of that is damaged and then you got the new callus here so what I do is I monitor it all through the year and um, when I see scaly flaky bark material or dead areas on it I pick that off okay and I go in I scrape it clean it um, wash it down fungicide it you know and I clean it the best I can and then I apply this okay whatever you have okay uh, it doesn't matter it's, even if it's that uh, tar based black tree paint sealer wound sealer or the white paint it doesn't matter just as long as you covered it to protect it from more uh, infestations and to protect the wood just a little bit longer to preserve it so that as the uh, wound heals it will roll over that stuff okay and again you can scratch it to you know stimulate the growth of the uh, callus so anyway this tree it was coming along nicely and as I well actually on here I left the wire on too long okay being out of town doing other things or whatever you know it, it was just overlooked and so between that and then removing the wire you know you cut the wire you move it you scrape and pull and you damage the um, outer layer of the tree anyway so again that's what I've done here is to scrape that and especially again in the springtime everything is moist you know spring rains the, um, the pollen is coming up well pollen the um, spores are coming up for your fungus you know and, and the little viruses are being transmitted so you want to do that the cleaning at that time if you have a tree that's damaged like this um, you have uh, the Japanese beetles are boring so they'll bore into your tridents they'll bore into your Japanese maples and you'll see a little bleeding you know from a little bit of nasty looking little hole like it's got a cold you know um, you want to cut a hole in that you know not a gorge but just a little hole shoot you some um, fungicide and pesticide in there and I would not seal it up I'd leave that there leave the scar it will heal and you'll see and you'll know where it is okay I wouldn't cover it up because you want um, that to heal as naturally as possible and it's generally speaking it's just a little pinhole but you want to open it up some and inject it with your fungicide and your and your pesticide the beetle is in there but the beetle carries the fungus okay so and that happens more often on your Japanese maples than the tridents but uh, it happens on the tridents also so that's what you want to do and again this was just my neglect but as you can see this is an exposed root trident maple and by the way this is one of those seedlings along with the one that I had the wheel on the bottom of and running man so different treatment different size trees I mean I've got other trees this uh, this age <laughs> that are a lot larger okay and even though I have that one in a large pot it's even larger they're even larger than those so or even more refined every tree has its way but again I just exposed these roots a few weeks ago well uh, at the beginning of this week actually so all of these fine feeder roots are dying off I'll let them die dry and die on their own and then I'll go back and clean up what does not survive and even if little string roots remain I'll either attach them to one of these other roots to keep them from snagging and let them grow and then we'll see from that point but again 
if you do something like this, don't rush it. Okay, if you get a, a especially one of my uh, root over rock trees, a lot of times I'll present them for sale before I remove the soil. Why? Because I'm not looking to shock the roots. I'm looking to gradually expose that as you're watering, as the rain comes down, the wind blows, as it weathers, the roots are growing and thickening up still. And now that they're exposed to the UV, they're hardening off gradually instead of one big shock and the plant survives a lot better. You know, if I were processing the whole plant and putting it out there with the fully exposed roots, I would have taken care of all of that here. But I want people to uh, experience and enjoy the pleasures of growing these things as much as possible. I mean, I can create any number of tree configurations all day. That's all I do. I'm here all the, a lot, okay? But I want people to enjoy the art of bonsai. Not just having a tree, but growing the tree, caring for it, creating something that they can say is theirs. I may put the bones together, but I want you to put the flesh on that bone and the muscle and the skin. Hair, please. So, I've trimmed this back this year also and you can see it's growing uh, pretty strongly and um, I'm just about ready to trim this back but again I do elms too <laughs> and they have been um, taking up my time here lately so there you have it that's a look at several of the um, trident maples and a couple of, oh one last tip okay this is the other tip Mosquitoes. This is Mosquito Junction. Okay. This is Florida. Uh, a lot of places have mosquitoes. I was thinking I need to get me some mosquito traps. So I started looking online several months ago. I found this one uh, company that said it. We've got these mosquito traps. You can put, uh, I think it was two, well, no, four, I think, yeah, four of their traps on an acre and it would draw the mosquitoes away for three months. Okay. Now they didn't come right out at, up front for me to see and to hear. You have to start at the beginning of the mosquito season and then after three months you got to buy another kit. Well each one of those containers was 20 bucks. Okay. You call the mosquito pest guy. You're talking about 85, 90 bucks for one application. They may come back the first time and reapply if you have a complaint. But the next time they're going to charge you again on that third visit. So anyway. MSB, Mad Scientist of Bonsai. What did I do? I investigate. I learn. I think about the origins of stuff. Okay. I look at the deeper side and I say, well, everything has an ingredient. What's in that stuff? Sugar, salt, and yeast. You hear me? Sugar, salt, and yeast. Yeah, you heard me. I took my old chocolate bottle. Now, don't do like me. Don't drill the holes first. Put your sugar, salt, and yeast in there. Shake it up. Ooh, saw that juice. You shake it up. And then you drill your holes at the shoulder of whatever container. A mustard bottle like this. A gallon jug. You just add more sugar, water, and yeast. Okay. And it's online. You can find it. Okay. You can find it. Just do a DIY search for mosquito traps. Non-toxic. And you should find it. I'm not advertising for anybody. I'm not giving any formulas. I'm saying that you don't have to spend an arm and a leg when you can go to your pantry and get your yeast out. Do it when your spouse that bakes isn't looking. You can get some sugar and you can certainly get a little salt. Okay. Put that stuff together and put this in your... I put these... Again, they said you're supposed to put it away from you. To draw the mosquitoes away well i was in the middle of the mosquito season so i needed them gone now i put these everywhere i could i think i made 12 or more of these containers including gallon jugs 
I checked them the next morning and they were chocker block full of bugs not only mosquitoes flies and gnats which I don't need either okay non-toxic okay sugar salt and yeast now that's not all but wait I've got more for you of course you're gonna have to use your chemical mosquito spray now a uh, stuff like um, I mean they've got some stuff that you can spray around your vegetables your plants and you know the pets and animals and after it dries it's okay or within three days you can harvest your vegetables you look into it you put a name on it I'm not gonna say okay because I'm not gonna be liable for it but I'm saying there's stuff out there that you can use that stuff you spray in close but then you go to the DIY shops and buy this stuff the same stuff that the bug man sprays in your yard and around your house and when he tells you you can't come around this until it dries this is the stuff you spray that stuff on the perimeter of your uh, property to get rid of the mosquitoes you spray it um, you know where people are not going to be but you spray the stuff that you buy in the store every day that says once it dries in three days you spray that and then you put these if you're in the middle of mosquito season you put these as many as you can make up wherever you want them but generally speaking about that high you know you can put them anywhere okay but about that high and to the ground you know all around and these will definitely draw the mosquitoes away I'm telling you this is not a joke I'm not kidding this stuff works okay but wait there's more not only do you do this not only do you get the two types of um, chemical bug spray and spray them each in their own locations and I'm talking about when you're in the middle of mosquito season I had a person to come here get out of their car turn right around after a few paces and ran back to the car and drove off why because the mosquitoes were so bad my friends come over to harvest um, lemongrass and they're running and dancing I mean so I'm out there dancing with them okay oh you mosquitoes are bothering you they are bad but I put this stuff out I spray the three day then you can harvest your crops kind of pest control stuff and then the DIY long-term pest control spray on the perimeters and then this is a secret okay you listening are you listening Bloop. the camera went off no Epsom salt not table salt this is table salt that you put in here Epsom salt magnesium you sprinkle that any place you want to all over okay you put it in your gutters you put it in any water bins that you might have okay if you trap rain water and you're not drinking it or feeding it to your well even with the Epsom salt it's just magnesium just gonna make him go to the bathroom you sprinkle it all around on your lawn and everything you know you cut your lawn and uh, you sprinkle it around you don't even have to water it in okay that will knock down the mosquitoes also be it uh, plain or be it the fragrant stuff I like the fragrant stuff because it makes it smell really good around here and if you see me sweat okay you know it might not be uh, a nice smell going on but Epsom salt that's all you need you sprinkle it around you know five pounds cost you about five or six bucks okay four pounds five or six bucks there about so you get a few bags of those you sprinkle it around nothing is 100 percent perfect okay and you do have to reapply I mean just like the bug man that's why they are in business they have to come back but it will substantially reduce your mosquito population that you will be amazed okay I'm no commercial for anybody I'm not uh, touting anybody's uh, genius except my own because I found this junk out why because I know that this world has a lot to offer and if you look for it it's right there okay salt sugar and yeast table salt Epsom salt on the grass okay magnesium and if it hits your plant it's just a soil amendment it's just a mineral so it's not going to hurt anything 
that you're growing. All right? Well, that's it for me. I hope that's enough for you. Later.